Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. In today's video we are fixing this beautiful Sanyo DCX 3300KB amplifier. All I know is that this is a 4 channel amplifier, it distorts like crazy, it has some hum and basically every channel sounds different so the things are not looking good already. Let's test it and see what's wrong with it. I would recommend connecting it to good speakers. That's because bad amplifiers sometimes output a high DC voltage that can ruin your speaker within seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it to this dummy load instead and measure the output voltage. So let's see what we get. This one looks okay, we have just a few millivolts at the output. The second channel looks good too. This is the third channel and it looks fine. And this is the fourth channel, which is also okay. Now I disable the dummy load and I'm trying to figure out the right input using a very scientific method. I think this is it. Now I'm applying a 1 kHz tone and I want to hear what this channel sounds like. This sounds good to me. I think this one is working actually. The second channel sounds bad already. It has a noticeable 50 Hz hum. Let's raise the volume and see what we get. This one is definitely distorted. So this one is apparently the front left channel. This is the rear right channel. And honestly I'm not sure about this one. I'm not sure if it's distorted on or not. This is strange. But we'll see about this. Let's move on. And finally the rear left channel which is very distorted and it also has a loud hum. Now in order to confirm what I'm hearing I'm using the oscilloscope which is connected to the input of the amplifier on one channel and to the output on the other channel. So now we can have a look at the waveforms to see if they are distorted or not. Let's start once again with the first channel which is the front right. This one looks really clean. Let's repeat the test for the second channel. And this one is noticeably distorted. Now this is what the third channel sounds like. Looks okay on the oscilloscope. And finally this is the fourth channel. Once again it's very distorted. Another powerful technique when debugging something like this is to put a scope in XY mode and look at the transfer characteristic. We are looking for a straight line or an ellipse and everything that looks asymmetrical indicates that there is something wrong with the amplifier. So here are the characteristics for the four channels. I think it's easy to tell which ones are bad. The ones that are asymmetrical are definitely faulty. So let's see what we have inside. Honestly this is pretty disappointing for a Japanese amplifier because I think it looks really messy. There are lots of wires around here but yeah I, I digress. Another um, annoying thing about this is that this uses this pesky STK hybrids and um, if one of these is bad replacing it is a nightmare because they are obsolete and they are even harder to find than vacuum tubes. Apart from this somebody has been in here before and once again this is a questionable repair because by the looks of it they decided to replace the original capacitors with some capacitors that are even older than the amplifier by the looks of them which is questionable and they are also axial capacitors uh, with extra wires so that they fit onto radial footprints which is a really bad idea. Apart from this I don't know we have some nice kanji stamps here so I can only imagine the people at Sanyo going hi and then psh, stamping it. Every stamp has different kanji characters on it which is nice. What makes this amplifier special is that it uses these STK hybrids. So even though this one says IC here, it's not really an IC but instead it's a hybrid. That's because if you look inside there is a PCB inside with multiple silicon dies with bond wires running between them. So uh, the idea behind this was to simplify building and designing amplifiers by uh, having a hybrid like this with a few passive components uh, around it and that's it, you get a power amplifier. Now unfortunately these have lower specs than a discrete transistor amplifier, they have higher THD and so on but um, 
since it made things easier, they were really popular some time ago. These days, when one of these goes bad, it's a complete nightmare to replace it. That's because these are obsolete, they are hard to find and there are lots of fakes around. For example, this one is questionable, I'm not sure if it's an original part or not. This one looks factory to me. And the same goes for the other two, so we have one of these for each channel. On the bottom side we have signs of even more bad craftsmanship, unfortunately. So somebody burned all the wires in the way of presumably changing one of these hybrids, so this is really easy to avoid. Remember then when the soldering iron is hot, not only the tip is hot, but also this part. So what you want to do is you want to avoid anything that uh, is plastic with this area, because this is exactly what this person did. So they went in like this and they burnt all the wires in the way. And the solution is pretty easy, of course. You just need to approach the solder joints from an angle where nothing is uh, in the way. Just stay clear with this area uh, to any wires on the chassis. Now, in my opinion, poking around this with a multimeter is just silly business. There isn't much to test for, honestly, especially not with the power off. So yeah, with the amplifier on, you can check for obvious signs, make sure that they have power and all that. And uh, if that's the case, the only way that I know of that you can use in order to test this is to apply a test signal and make sure that the test signal is clean by the time it goes into the hybrid. And if it is clean, then it's the hybrid fault for making it distorted at the output. Obviously, if you have a distorted signal at the input of the hybrid, then you have to look somewhere else. So we are just trying to pinpoint the fault here. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the exact schematic of this amplifier, but I found a generic STK024 amplifier schematic, and I'm using that as a reference. And apparently, the input signal goes to pin 5. So you just count from left to right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is where the input should be. So let's see. Okay, as it turns out, this one is really clean. It's on channel 3 on the oscilloscope, the blue one. So it looks like the inputs are all clean, which means that the SDKs are most likely faulty. And at this point I would normally give up, however the owner of this amplifier decided to buy the SDK modules from eBay. I advised him not to do this because the chances of getting fake modules is pretty high. However, here they are. They arrived in this mosquito repellent box, so this is how you know you got the real deal. And this is what they look like. I mean, I don't know about you, but they look legit to me. They look exactly like the ones uh, in the amplifier, like the original ones. So they are probably legit Sanyo parts and they look old, honestly. They don't look like some uh, brand new cheap plastic Chinese thing, so they could work, who knows. So I marked the bad hybrids with a blue line. And this module is screwed to the chassis using two screws, so I removed those and now I think we have uh, enough room here to remove the screws of the STK module. So the first hybrid is out, it's this one. This one came out of the amplifier and I don't know about you, but uh, I think it looks identical to the ones from eBay. So we are either comparing fakes against fakes or this is the real deal. I mean, even the serial number looks the same or the date code or whatever this is. So now we just have to apply a ton of thermal compound and hope for the best.
Once again, I have to tell you that I hate the construction style of this thing. Look at this. This is a solder joint and the ground connection here is soldered directly onto the chassis. And of course this one snapped off when I removed the board. So now that it's back, this is probably an intermittent connection. And if you don't have this connection, chances are the STK is gonna blow up. I don't know what happens if it doesn't have a ground connection. So watch out for things like this. I have to redo this solder joint definitely. And I have to admit, it's such a vibe when Dial Gone Wild busts out his old Czechoslovakian soldering gun. So here's its Romanian equivalent, the Radio Progress soldering gun. It looks like this time even this one is having trouble doing the solder joint. <laughs> well that failed, what about this? There we go. To fix this solder joint I decided to use a piece of solder wick and then use hot air in order to solder it into place. And this is the final result. This was really hard to do, but I'm pretty sure this will make a good contact to ground. So the new STK hybrid is in. Let's see if it works. Okay, three, two, one, fire. Okay, it didn't explode yet. And we have no audio. I wonder if this is the right input. Actually this one is the right input and it works! Yes! Nice! So now that the STK hybrids were replaced on the left channels, I was really curious to see if there is any difference in performance from the Sanyo STKs to these no-name STKs. And in order to find out, I decided to measure the THD. Here's my test setup, which was fully described in my video about THD. You can find it in the description. So we are having a signal generator here that produces a 1 kHz sine wave. This one goes to the input of our amplifier. The output is connected to an 8 ohm dummy load. We are also looking at the RMS voltage at the output using this fluke multimeter. And we are also looking at the output of the amplifier using this nice spectrum analyzer. The STK0241 is specified at a THD of 0.5% at 20 watts. So we are aiming for 20 watts here. We are going to slowly raise the volume until we get to that power level. And by doing the math, this gives us an RMS voltage of 12.6. That's why we have the multimeter there. So this is the front right channel. Let's see. We are slowly raising the volume here, which is uh, something that you can also observe on the spectrum. We are at around 12.6 and now let's enable averaging. And now we get a THD of around 0.73%. This is the front right channel. Let's move on to the front left channel. This one has a THD of only 0.57, which is better. Moving on to the rear channels, this one is rear right. We have a THD of 0.80. And finally, the rear left channel, which has a THD of 0.73. As you can see, the left channels perform slightly better and those are the ones that have the original Sanyo parts, which is really interesting. So I went ahead and replaced all the STK hybrids, then I redid the measurements and uh, the transfer characteristics are obviously very nice now, here they are. However, the THD is not much better than before. And I also noticed that my THD measurements are not very repeatable, so... Uh, 
I think this is pretty much all that we can get out of this amplifier. At least now it has identical modules and everything is nice and symmetrical. So that's about it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming, please subscribe to this channel because there is more content like this on the way. Also, you can support this community by giving me a super thanks or by joining the YouTube channel with a paid subscription. Also, don't forget that Void Electronics also has a Discord server. So if you want to join the server, you can find the link below or on voidelectronics.com. That's it for now. Bye.